All right, and we're back on the show here, and we're very happy. We're going to be speaking to Lamont now. Lamont Daggle. 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 You know. Daggle. She grew up in Montreal. She should know how to, uh, you know what I'm saying? You should be able to, but hey, you know what? We're in Toronto right now, and as long as you attribute it to the same way you would say a bagel, you just put a D in the front. Wow. Yeah. Daigle. Someday we'll have a bagel shop called Daigle's Bagels. I well, promise. you know what's funny? Because you, you know Ernest, who yes. owns here all the time, mm -hmm. who lives in Ottawa. But his last name is Daigle as well. There's a lot of us out there. <laughs> so, uh, Ernest, if you're Look, watching. trying to say something. He's not related. <laughs> he's not related to that one. Er Ernest, don't call right now, please, because we're on the show. But hello. He's trying to say Ottawa. something. He's not related to that one, all right? Leave, They're leave, probably leave all related going alone. back. Hey, Lamont. Oh uh, Lamont's from um, Moncton, New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. See? All it's, right. uh, there's a lot going on in New Brunswick right now. Um, you know, it's a, great part of the, it's a great part of the country, but people are in meditation over there. It's such a beautiful countryside that um, everything's surrounded by ocean and forest and everything beautiful. So it's, it's interesting to see how people balance that with working and, you know, capitalism. It's fun. It's fun to see. You, you know, I have a, one of my best friends that I went to, uh, sat beside me in grade nine, mm -hmm. lives in, I think he lives in St. John. Yeah. You know, and uh, he's had a whole great life and family. That's, it's neat. It's neat to up. see how the English and the French get along with the First Nations over there. And I think there's a lot of uh, room for improvement, for sure, especially with the way the First Nations are treated, in my opinion. However, the French and the English... Really, you know, when, when you're down south of New Brunswick, you've got, you know, almost 95% English, 5% French. And as you hit Moncton in the middle, you see, you know, uh, Riverview, Dieppe, and Moncton, this tri-community of almost all French, almost all English, and Moncton, which is 50-50. Mm -hmm. And then when you go up to the top of the province where it's near Quebec, you're dealing with 95% English or French, 5% English up there. It's amazing how the, the province is really bilingual. Well, you know, in my hometown, which is in Ontario, so, sorry, he bust. We have lots of time today, but you know I want to talk he, to him. He, he keeps, he keeps hitting me. You know, I don't know <laughs> what it is. I know. I Leave me alone. That you want to? No, because get in because, on he, this. because he knows Lamont, so he figures that you know he's gonna take over. Well, I'm oh, not, oh man, I'm taking over. Already <laughs> fighting over Lamont. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Okay, but, well, go ahead. Wherever you know you're from, well, Welland. Yeah, well, you, she's, <laughs> yeah, Welland. So Welland's uh, a lot of French in Welland too, mm -hmm. in Ontario. And uh, we had two. There's two French high schools there. There's a, you know, we had the Speaker of the House uh, of the Parliament was from Welland, who was completely bilingual. Jill Perron. Should be anybody in government should be, absolutely bilingual. Yeah, I mean, I think they're good. New Brunswick and mm -hmm. uh, Welland are good examples of and Northern Ontario. Yep. And oh, I was surprised how many Quebec, you know, how many, sorry, French speakers are in Northern Ontario. It's amazing. Well, it's, it's Northern Ontario is half French. My, my oh, grandmother wow. was French Canadian mm -hmm. uh, from North Bay area and um, beautiful part of the country. Yeah. Yeah. Canada has got such a, such a rich environment, you know, East to West coast. They're so different from each other. Dude, you yeah. know what? There's, there's entire Francophone towns in Alberta. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and they're just as conservative as everybody else in Alberta. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious how each province holds its own energy. You know, it's amazing. So let's talk about what you're involved with these days. Uh, right. and, and do you want to just introduce because you got the official title that Lamont. Yes, Ooh, um, nice. you called. Um, you got it's the Line Canada, mm -hmm. and then you have like your little your slogan. You say you are the revolution. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about this movement? Sure. I mean, you know, the movement really is about um, the people discovering what comes up for them during these times. Um, so in seven months since we started doing this, I think April uh, 17th was our first real protest at Queens Park in downtown Toronto uh, at the South End, was that uh, people were showing up not understanding what was really happening. I think there was a lot of questions at the beginning of this uh, pandemic, they say, you know, great quote, pandemic revolution, whatever is happening in society right now, this lockdown um, takes on its own animal. And I think at the beginning of this, people were really wondering what a protest really meant at this time. And as we went, now we're heading into week 28. Uh, our first protest, our second protest actually had snow. So we're almost making a full wheel around to another season in this protest again. 
Um, so what is it all about? Well, people just figured out that their freedoms and rights were being impinged. They wanted to come out and celebrate with people as to the freedoms that Canadians have in their hearts and to return us back to that. And there's a slogan in the protest, you know, that we say very easily, no new normal. So we don't want to go to a new normal, but we also don't want to return to an old normal because quite frankly, what we're discovering right now, which is great because of this movement, is that we don't want to return to the old ways that brought us to this level anyhow. It all needs to be torn apart and rebuilt because in my opinion, from what I know and from what that channel has been reporting and working on since the beginning of this channel, right, uh, is that the world is a place where it's been um, taken over by energies that don't have humanity as its first concern, in my opinion, anyhow. Well, we noticed that this movement has grown. Yes. It's not just in Canada now. It's um, it's all over, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us about how that just expanded. It sure. just went completely like you just like everybody just started to catch on well you know it, it, like anybody else like that went on the media we've all been taking a look at you know your mainstream media social media facebook twitter youtube as to what's been going on so over the last 28 weeks i've been able and we've been able to have a huge media team uh, we've got a law team of people that we're building so we've been able to see really what's been going on in the world and you know we started here in canada and all of a sudden we started noticing that people were organizing themselves um, uh, province-wide, okay? So really, when you look at the line Canada and now the line international, which we've gone into eight countries, is that we wanted a symbol that was really simple to draw on your clothes or on your car or on a poster. And that was that, that symbol, which is O for oppression, the government's crossed the line and we're drawing the line with that red swath, right? That's swash right across it. No, no I know, Lamont, you've got the button on your shirt. I'm just going to show that. Uh, I think I have a better way of uh, uh, of demonstrating it because uh, I oh. happen to. Uh, oh, my goodness. You see, this is right on the line, man. You see? It's simple for people to look at and you know um it's it's people have to understand that it was it's a symbol the na the line international and national was created as a symbol for the people that are here and struggling to end tyranny and control by the government uh and some proponents of this new world order that is quite frankly turning up the heat these days with the government and and i think people have just been paying attention to the fact that this is an unraveling of society. Uh, everything is coming out of the woodwork here. Uh, it's not as simple as a mask mandate. It's not as simple as COVID. Uh, everything's coming into it now. Mandatory vaccinations, one world currency, one world order. You know, our children are being taken away from us in schools, our elderly are being taken away. Um, it's really a snap down. It's really a lockdown that the government's been thrown at us. So. We just started as a grassroots movement. We're not affiliated. We're a political nonpartisan. Uh, we are a nationwide civil liberties group that is there to help the people through a struggle to end corruption and tyranny. And we started that in Canada, east to west coast. It's done very well. It's very easy to spread. Uh, we started as a leaderless movement because we didn't want anybody to be able to target any specific leaders uh, to take them out at the beginning of this. But as we grew, we had to um, you know, grow a not-for-profit organization through a corporation just to protect ourselves and now we've um yeah we've created a law action group to be able to go after some of these businesses or the government that is starting to impinge more on our freedoms daily so so when you're doing this where do you do these protests at and with the covid mm -hmm. and you know everything's going on the restrictions so you just still just yeah. Where do you do it in Toronto? Toronto, or yep. you have you pick various things and you tell people where you're going to be at, or how does it go? Yeah. Well, we started off at I believe the first protest by Free North Patriots was held at City Hall on April 16th, uh, and then um, the co-founder with me uh, discovered that there was another show happening, a protest at Queens Park at the South End on April 17th. So he attended that, and uh, we started to do work together and discovered that uh, people needed the line you know, to show that there was a, a symbol of unity because you see the line is all about really covering uh, as a movement, all the groups uh, across Canada in case mainstream media goes down. You see now, 
Uh, we started off at Queen's Park. We've been there, I think, uh, 22 or 23 weeks. And then we discovered Dundas Square. Now, the reason we went to Dundas Square and we've been there, you know, for now four protests is that we went to Ottawa for a huge show uh, where we had about 15,000 people. We then attended a huge protest in Montreal where we saw, you know, numbers between 50 and 70,000 in their opinion. It was the most massive thing I've ever seen. And then we came back here to a couple of thousand people going, we can do better than this. We can do better. You know, the French really showed the way to what's possible in the streets. Uh, almost 50% men and women. And we thought, hey, let's bring this to Dundas Square and bring 10,000 people in the streets in Toronto, which we did. No, it's because I think it's because they got fluoride in the water here in Ontario. They don't have fluoride in uh, Montreal. Is that the truth? Uh, I believe that is still the case. Wow. Right? So, uh, you know, the people in Ontario, they're being uh, affected by the fluoride, or whatever that does. Maybe it makes you apathetic. Maybe it makes you, you know, less agitated. You know? It absolutely does. That's what fluoride does. It was created for, you know, it was a, a byproduct, I believe, of uh, the explosives industry. You know, they were taking care of, of certain uh, demolitions during mining processes, right? And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's an agent that calcifies, you know, the, the pineal gland here in the body, you see. I think um, they started uh, using it in uh, Nazi concentration camps to keep the uh, prisoners yep. docile. Exactly. So that would make a lot of sense. Also, you have to realize that the, the more concentrated you are in downtown Toronto or a city center is that you have less oxygen. Okay. okay. So uh, from the cars and all the pollution and the electricity and the Wi-Fi and all this kind of jazz. And so, yeah, people are breathing less oxygen in downtown Toronto. There is still lead in the water. You know, that's partly why the Roman Empire went kind of cuckoo birds. Mm -hmm because not only was it spread over too far where the corruption and scandals could grow with the people that the, the main empire couldn't keep a track of, but the water was laden. All their aqueducts were laden with lead joints mm -hmm. and the people lost their minds. Yeah. You see, so you add less oxygen. Now you're wearing masks. You've got lead in the water and fluoride. If that's the case, then Toronto really has to, to smarten that up because uh, yeah, the Montreal, the Quebecers certainly have energy for this. It's in their DNA to revolt. Yeah, that's just the way it is. That, that, and that's true as well. Uh, so what was, the, I mean, I heard a figure of 250,000 people on the streets in Montreal. Is that, is that you know, I think I threw that number out. I think I'm the one that started that. And, but we were at uh, a protest last week, I believe on the 17th, where we had Stéphane Bla and his group from Quebec who came to me uh, nicely and just put their hand on my shoulder and said, Lamont, um, we're not in the habit of overinflating numbers during protests. And we know that you said... A quarter of a million and we think it's probably closer to 50 or 60,000 and they gave me this look and I went all right okay <laughs> you know if you're adamant that it was those numbers and those are your streets I'll take you for that and I'll and I'll, and I'll change that on my media because uh, to well, me it looked huge it's interesting though that uh, you know the people in the movement themselves are being conservative when it comes to and being act, trying to be accurate when it comes to the numbers but when when you see what the mainstream media says oh my goodness the movement, they tend to inflate those numbers down the other way, right? Yeah, because they're trying to and then they're not even really covering the movement. And this is the thing that people need to be concerned about. The, the media, the mainstream media is not really reporting the truth. Right. And they're giving people a false idea. They're managing public opinion. And I, I think people really need to be aware of that, that they're being manipulated by the by the mainstream media yep. and by you know, by, by the government. And, and now we see all this censorship that's happening on social media. What can you say? You know, when I get out there and I'm chanting through my megaphone every weekend, one of our big chants is the government is lying to you. The media is lying to you. Do your own research. Check the facts. Check the facts. In other words, how can people watch movie after movie after movie of programming, which is what Hollywood is, as to what the government can do on the side of media and dark forces and dark elite, you know, uh, secret programs and not realize that that's what's happening in real life. Mm -hmm. People can't see the connection. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many movies I've seen of the hero's journey. However, 
like Lord of the Rings, Superman, Spider Man, you name every, you know, every, a, it's one every of the seven storylines. Right. right. You know, where the man always dies, mm -hmm. you know, and here we are seeing real true patriots on the streets of Toronto uh, going down every, every, for 29 weeks now. And people call us COVIDiots and Yahoos mm -hmm. because they believe uh, a politician that sits there reading from a teleprompter with no mask on while he's surrounded by people behind him with masks on, John Tory, same thing, telling us that we're the liars, telling us that we're getting tickets when we're not, mm -hmm. telling us that we're being arrested when we're not. And every time they threaten to come and do some kind of new mandate, the people stay away from the protest because they're afraid of what they say, but we're not getting arrested and we're not getting tickets. They lie. So someday what we're gonna push with this law program that we're doing with the Line Canada, one of the programs is to call into accountability uh, a process where the mainstream media, media is held accountable for lying to the public over mm -hmm. and over again. Oh. You know, you know, I heard. So, sorry, okay. I want ahead. you to say that, but I just want to say I just heard there's a lawsuit has been uh, launched against Google and YouTube. Yes. For, for taking all these channels down. Yep. And they've raised it over one hundred thousand dollars. They've hired mm -hmm. an amazing lawyer and uh, they really need to be held accountable. They're interfering with, with free speech. Absolutely. In the United States. In America. every way. In every way. Alternate, uh, alternative media is are really the only people we can trust right now. Anybody who has any leanings of being affiliated with any of these corporations in government are no longer trustable. They are bound. You know, they're handcuffs. When you're working for these agencies and stuff and you're covering for these people is that you understand their crimes, okay? We've talked to so many police that, uh, that are actually on our side mm -hmm. because they see what these politicians are doing with their private lives and it's a absolute horror. You know, mm. so the media is the same thing. They're seeing all of this happen. They're covering for these people. Well, yeah. Sorry, D-Boss, you want to say something? Yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, if if I can. <laughs> Please, by all means. No, but um, you're saying alternative media. Yes. Like us. Yes. Because we're people that's bringing the real thing well, just, to you. Because yeah. real life matters, D-Boss. Yeah, and all I do, mm -hmm. real life matters. And that, you know, that's something that's um, that's matter. That's a matter to Lamont, you know. Yes. And it seems like you're very passionate about this, this movement and stuff. But, you know, some people probably, you know, like if I'm, if I'm sitting here, I'm, they're trying to figure out, okay, you're standing up for the people. Yes. But what... But what are you, what, what, what is this, what is this really doing? You know, I'm just asking from, you know, cause people probably sitting there going, okay, do we understand it? This is the line Canada. It's standing up for this, but what is it standing for? Cause a lot of people are watching from Caribbean, Absolutely. from us and they're saying, okay, what is this? But what is it? What is it really sure. doing? You know, like you just get a little bit, in, you just want to get into the meat of it. Well, yeah. And I'm going to try to, to weave it through a couple of different narratives that are get, going to get me and you to the point is that <laughs> ever since we started this, we've never been able to trust exactly what's happening in each country. Well, and you're talking about right? the masks, the lockdown, the masks. Right? every part Do of okay. everything, the lockdown, you know, what it's like to send your, your kids back to school. What are your rules around incarceration? If you head out the door, you know, when you're not supposed to certain places like Panama, you know, I was hearing that you, you only get two hours a week or you get thrown in jail to go into your groceries or to go to the gym or to do it two hours a week. Here, we're able to do protests. We've gotten away with a lot. And then there's other countries that have absolutely no restrictions, like Sweden, for example, where they just went through the, the hive mentality of let it run through the people, just like a cold, just like any kind of flu season, and we'll get used to it and we'll have our own way okay, of eating. Okay, so this is, this is basically about COVID and then the restrictions yes. and the lockdown. Number because, one. Because you know what? Because in Trinidad, right, it's it's the, the borders are still closed. People cannot leave. People that went to vacation down right. there well, last and year. There people that died there, yeah, yeah. right? And, and uh, couldn't get the care that they needed. Couldn't and, get and, up to Canada. And they, can, or, they can't come because the borders are still shut. Yeah. Barbados, the borders are open. But, you know, my, my, my mom and the different, they went down there. They, you had to take the COVID test before you left here, 72 hours. Then when you got down there, they didn't really tell you that you had to go into quarantine for a week in a hotel. So they couldn't really even go to their destination and had to put up money for that. Are they still on quarantine? Um, yeah, she came. They came out uh, on a week, a week. Do, do and they were, they were surprised. See, the, the sea was right there. 
-hmm. and all they saw was you know they couldn't do anything so people had to bring money so it seems to me like something some of this COVID thing as you know my mom was saying she said it seems like it's a money making thing that they're trying to get you yep. know people stay in the hotels partly so people don't got that money with people yes. going on vacation sure you got money enough money to you budgeted enough money to go down to do what you have to do to go to your place where you dwell right well, look, look, look at patricia she went to nova scotia had to stay in the hotel for two weeks two weeks and so, the hotel so certain industries are going down Almost 60% of small businesses right now are ready to, to mm -hmm. fail through a second lockdown, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we're building platforms to promote and help those people stand up for their rights. Then you've got the big box stores that are able to stay open. You've got Halloween being taken away, but then there's drive through windows where you're being handed bags of treats every day, and that's okay. So the, the hypocrisy is huge here. And when people start to wake up, like I said, every country has its own burden to bear mm -hmm. as to how the government is oppressing their people in every way that they want. So what we're saying is this, stand up, wake up, communicate with your community, take off the masks so you can actually see people's smiles or frowns, communicate with your people as to what you are doing in your life to stand up for yourself. And if you have questions, this is what we're all about. And we're here to support people for that. Now. What we're also trying to do is align ourselves with smart folk, you know, smart folk like Rocco Galati, right? Constitutional lawyer that's going after the government from the top possible echelons of government to go and take down this, the government of Canada that way with 190 plus charges, I believe, criminal and constitutional challenges. And then what we're doing is we're also working with all these individual little political groups that are trying to figure out how to work with either a republic or make each province its own country and, and really explain the laws of the common people to the common laws, right, is what's going on. So they're trying to teach people how to have their own power. And that being said, what we're doing is we're just holding that and, and, and having protests so that people can keep the government and the police and everybody on their toes to say, we do not acquiesce to the power. We do not acquiesce to control and opposition and oppression. What we're doing is we're standing up for our rights. And as long as we do this on mass, we always show the government that we're never going away. The evolution of the revolution will be there for the people as a watchdog. And finally, um, this is what we're doing. We're creating ways of going after these politicians and these police forces, which we love, but from a municipal standpoint, based on each individual uh, businesses and how they're impinging on people's charter of rights and freedoms. So we're coming at them from the top. We're coming at them from the bottom. We're holding people personally liable and accountable for their actions. And that's what we're doing. We're just keeping them busy, supporting the people to let them know they're not alone in a, in a world right now where they're trying to shut people down and incur as many casualties as possible through mental health issues. And we're saying enough is enough. Freedom is essential. You know, I just want to comment a little bit on the, uh, I showed a bit of the video there, showed, I think it was you hugging a police officer. And I know you yeah. guys have had great relations with the police. Absolutely. As you've done these uh, protests and, uh, and, uh, and, and I just want to comment a little bit on the whole defund police yes. uh, meme that's kind of gotten hold in the U.S. and, and in Canada as well. And mm -hmm. that is that, uh, I mean, these, these local police officers here, these are people who live in our towns. They're members of our community. Have families here. They have families. And yes. they are policing. Their job is to serve and protect. Yes. Right? Because they're here for the people. They're yes. not here against the people now it's not perfect and no and it's some never bad, bad is stuff happens because human beings are human beings that's but, it but the whole thing about the what well, you can't just get rid of the police anarchy sounds great until it happens in your well, town but but my right? concern is this is that the whole defund police is just uh it, it, it's like really the outcome of it's going to be you get rid of the people that are part of our community that are here for us yes and then you have to move in other people that don't care about the people right. that don't live in the community, yes. like international soldiers or international people, the UN puts in a police force. These people will not care for the community. They're not here for the people. They're here against the people. And this is what I fear the whole defund police movement is really all about. That is exactly what it's about because each individual person's freedom will be gone when you have an anarchist force of people that can do what they need to do. 
because Toronto is a beautiful city. Okay, it really could grow up a little bit more. It could take on some of the energy of a beautiful city like Chicago, for example. They're both well suited to copy from each other in their environmental and architectural range and their people. You know, I, I really, There's you know, geography, too. The geography is perfect, yeah. right? So what are we doing? We've we've lost the plot on that in that way. But I'll tell you, um, at the end of the day. Every industry, every government, every corporation, every bit has bad apples in it that will never change. 95% of the people that go into the police, in my opinion, have good intentions. Okay, they want to protect and serve. We need these people. Somebody has to be there when things go sideways. Judge, jury, and official right there on the ground. Sometimes these guys have to make decisions. They have to. When things get heated, all of a sudden you have to make decisions that are based on how to protect yourself and how to protect them, the people that are around you. It's not an easy job. The cops have to put up with people at their worst days all the time. Yeah. It's not an easy job. Like the TTC guys, you know, facing the, the you know, the, the transit of a city of people that are disheartened in a slavery system mm -hmm. where they're tired, broke, downtrodden, you know, having to travel in city streets at four o'clock in the morning and late at night these people are not happy sometimes and so we have to surround people with love and heart and say we're all in this together we have to empathize and at the end of the day i have to support those cops because i wouldn't want to be doing what they're doing yeah right no. i wouldn't yeah no hey we got a video here i showed a little bit of it uh now there's sound do you want do you want the sound of the video to to be there lamont sure should... i think that would lend energy to what we're doing here for sure okay great so we got this we're gonna watch this video now it's uh only uh well it's about two minutes long yeah so two it's minutes. gonna it's gonna i guess tell its own story yeah give us a little rundown as to what we do every week okay here we go. yep <laughs> Just what happens every Saturday in yep. Toronto, right? Come on. Yep. Um, what's uh, you got? Uh, what do you got planned for this Saturday? Well, this Saturday we're going to have once again twelve to four at Dundas Square. We will be there with the Lion Canada. We'll be there with hugs over masks. We'll be over there with the Mothers Against Distancing, uh, private on demand health education, um, or for the kids. Sorry, and uh, you know, Vaccine Choice Canada, Vax Canada. Um, everyone's going to be there um, to be a part of this amazing Halloween, Halloween celebration motorcade because it's getting a little colder now. And uh, we're going to have ourselves a little uh, 
I believe a haunted house at an un, undescribed or undisclosed location at this point. You know, we're going to try to keep it until the last minute and uh, try to have ourselves a Halloween party. So show up with your your uh, your trucks, your pickup trucks, uh, decorated for Halloween. Come with your costume and show us your your scariest individual or scariest uh, 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 costumes of Doug Ford and John Tory are welcome. So this might be one time when people actually want to wear the masks. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Have fun with it. Have fun with it. You know, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun because, like I said, you know, it's n m people might not always agree with what Halloween means. Right. People might not always agree of what Christmas means for people, but at the end of the day, it's people's lovely pro process around ceremony and getting together with community and loving each other and being there for the kids and showing that mm -hmm. without cultures, without money, without genres, without genders, it doesn't matter anymore. People just need to start loving each other and supporting each other and just be together and have fun. You know? Uh I mean, exactly. protests are one thing, but you got to get out there and have some fun. It keeps well, us that's, alive. That's the thing. It's like the whole lockdown thing is really just about stopping everybody's fun. Yep. I mean, even like on Friday nights here, we kind of jam out here. We got a few people, you know, we got the band. Yeah. We play it. It's loud. And we stop. But like we say, we're going to stop at a certain time because we want to be respectful for our neighbors and stuff like that. Sure. And and we do. But I, I went out there like, I guess, two two weeks ago. And there were two, two police cruisers outside, right? Now, we were done for the night, and I was on my way home. Right. But, you know, when I, I saw the, the two uh, uh, police officers there, and I just kind of, my eyes met, and I kind of just said hi, like, with a nod. And uh, and they said, uh, he said uh, is there a party going on uh, upstairs? And, and there wasn't because we were finished, so I just said no. Right. And then they said, great. That means we don't have to be here. <laughs> In other go. words, like they don't want to do, they don't want to be the the, the party poopers either. No, right? they don't. But this is what this is what their job is. This is what now you know their paycheck depends on it. Their families depend on it, and this is the whole thing. We're all slaves to that money system, and uh, and it's really just being used to manipulate people. Well, you see, brother, and what you've been doing with that channel for so long is you've talked about. You know, you've had people coming on here talking about the currency system. You've been, you've had people talking about Pizzagate. You've had people talking about, you know, 5G. You've had people talking about Flat Earth. You've been, you've had people here talking about what we're currently facing with this movement. So it's a high speed education process for people interested uh, to be around people that have intimate knowledge on all these issues going on in the world. It's causing us to take a look at the old system that needs to be rehandled and re, um, you know, re reconvened. Basically, let's take a look at basically every part of society that went sideways here and just uh, redo this in a way where, you know, it either makes sense to help people or it doesn't. There's really no more education needs to happen around that. Is this? Let's say for a paint on the walls, does the paint on the walls have a chemical? that will off gas and poison you or will it not really simple question well we're going to want to pick the paint that doesn't no vocs makes sense right absolutely fabrics natural fabrics hemp that's coming in now right what are the alternate alternative senses of, of energy you know even even uh, electric cars you know what's going on what kind of power does it take to build enough power to power that electric car versus all the other ways that would be less with emissions and and actually help like hemp once again you know bodies for cars hemp clothing for people hemp i think chi and chong already tried the hemp as a body for a car no really did it do well on an on impact I think it caught on fire <laughs> i think it did um <laughs> that, would that would be great that would be great so listen uh, yeah it's been great to have you on and have this conversation and and really i think that's what it's about is we need a new kind of conversation to, to talk about these issues that are really important because the media is not doing it uh, and the government's not doing it parliament which means a place where you can talk is not yeah really about that. i want to i want to help sorry yeah do i have one last thing yeah i just want to remind people the symbol 
the oppression symbol that that O for oppression in this last year that says we draw the line looks a little ominous people sometimes look at that and think it's about violence or it's a neo-nazi group or it's fascist or that we're aligned with blm or antifa absolutely not this is meant to have a conversation and ask questions we are non-violent peaceful patriots however it's only to do anything to do that we would ever be, you know, where we're defending ourselves would be in self-defense, right? When we're out there protesting and stuff. Sometimes people come at us with, with, you know, we've had people come out with machetes. You know, we've had people that were, uh, that came after us with chainsaws at Cherry Beach, you know, take out our DJ equipment, right? So we're the ones that are being attacked by the people. You know, people are attacking yeah. us from not wearing masks. Well, so we're just saying it's peaceful. Come out and see us and, and ask questions and be a part of it. So if people want to uh, find you or join your this revolution, where can they go? Sure. Well, number one, the line Canada is off Facebook because they just decided to delete us all of a sudden. Uh, because after our, oh, our last sure. protest that you saw these videos on, 10,000 people, they said, oh, I think they're getting too big. So the line Canada dot com, the line international dot com. People can go on there and subscribe to our newsletters for all the updated protests and flyers that are going on. Also, People can go into the shop and help us because we're not affiliated with any politicians or sponsorships. So we depend on the sales of T-shirts and flags to help us, you know, incur these costs and pay for speakers and rentals for what we have to do every week. And uh, and if anybody wants to ever donate, we have an email called donate at the line Canada dot com where people can just send us cash and say, go and do what you need to do. We're a not for profit now. So our accountant will do the books and make sure we're all balanced and tickety boo. All right. yeah, and you got it's in there. I just want to say this mm -hmm. it's international, and you've got people already. In, yes, yeah, I know you got people in Trinidad, but this mm -hmm. is open for people that think this is an important issue in, in their country. That's it, or on their island. They can take get on the symbol, with you guys. Yes, and you can work with learn from what you guys have learned, and they can teach you what they. Uh, are, are learning in in their can't wait we place. need to have that so we can do videos even with you and do it live on you know our other channels and stuff where uh we're speaking to these people right so they can reach out to me personally lamont l-a-m-o-n-t at the line canada.com and we can talk about you know having us support it and support these people in other countries simple take on the symbol put on your stuff send us pictures let's have a chat fantastic Okay, we're going to take a quick, uh, well, thanks again, Lamar. We're going to take pleasure. a quick commercial break, and then we're going to come back with Talk It Out right after this. And then uh, and then we got K cocaine, cocaine coming cocaine. on the show. Cocaine That's an A. Not that kind of cocaine, you know what I'm saying? Okay, we'll cocaine be right back. Cocaine, okay. We'll be back. We'll be right back. Coconut cane sugar.